Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the event, How Will Technology Bring Back Young People to Rural Areas? This event is organized by Smart AgriHubs, and that's a Horizon 2020 project supporting the digitalization of European agriculture, but also in collaboration with the European Parliament. And I'm very pleased that three members of the European Parliament are involved in this event. So a special welcome for Mr. Ruysen, is the circle and Mr. Tudorash. It seems to be the perfect time to discuss this topic as the cap negotiations came recently to a conclusion and the farm to fork strategy is being actively discussed in the European Parliament. This topic of young farmers is particularly important as we need more young people to join the agricultural sector. We need a new generation of farmers to feed Europe and beyond. This event was initially supposed to be organized at the European Parliament, but unfortunately, due to the current situation, we had to move the event from the physical EU Parliament location to an online format. And this had some consequences for some of the speakers, unfortunately, and we are looking forward to better times when we can meet and greet in person again. The long-standing business models in the agriculture sector are poised for disruption. And the future of farming is young and digital and shaped by a changing climate. As new opportunities emerge, how are we actually ensuring that young people have the right tools to foster in rural areas? Well, we are looking forward to very interesting discussions with young farmers, members of the European Parliament, the European Commission, and also experts of the architect sectors. This morning, we have three sessions. First of all, the challenges accounted by young farmers. Then we have the second session, how digital innovation hubs can help to overcome present obstacles of agriculture. And the third session is about new tools to communicate and disseminate for farmers, along with career advice for the architect sector. But before we start, I would like to mention that we will have a short coffee break. And during the coffee break, the video testimonials of young farmers around Europe will be shared. We encourage you to interact with our speakers. So please submit your questions in the Q&A tab to facilitate that tracking. Now I will start with the first session, challenges encountered by young farmers. This session will be chaired by Betjan Ruysen, member of the European Parliament for the European Conservatives and Reformists, and also member of the Parliament's AGRI Committee. Mr. Ruysen, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, good morning to everyone and very welcome to the first session of today's event. How will technology bring back young people to the rural development, the rural areas? Well, as first step, and that's what we will do in this session, uh, we will need to have a look at the challenges encountered by young farmers. I'm very pleased to welcome our speakers for this session. Ms. Diana Lenzi from the European Council of Young Farmers, Mrs. Adeline Sijanski from the International Movement of Catholic Agriculture and Rural Youth, Mr. Jeremy de Serle, member of the European Parliament and a dear colleague, and Dr. Doris Marcat from the European Commission. We are looking forward to your insights on the topic. I will introduce each of the speakers before their presentation. A few words by way of introduction to this session. Why do we in Europe care about bringing back young people to the rural areas? Yes, you are right, because we urgently need them there. We need young farmers to sustain our food production for the near future. It all comes down to our food security. The production of sufficient, safe and affordable food is the most essential reason why we need to attract young farmers to the sector. And fortunately, 
Many of them are interested and willing, but obstacles such as access to land and access to credit are very real and urgent. And we have a responsibility in the European Union to facilitate and assist to overcome these challenges. Secondly, apart from taking care of our food production, we will need the next generation of our farmers in our rural areas to keep our rural areas vibrant and in their natural role as stewards, stewards of our rural landscape and the environment. We will need to ensure sustainability from the economic, ecological and social point of view. Otherwise, our human capital, our farmers, will either leave the sector or will not even enter at all. The ambitions are very high. Over the coming years, we will see more initiatives coming out of the Green Deal and the Farm to Fork strategy in particular. One thing is clear. We have to move our attention from targets to tools. Our farmers, and especially our young farmers, will be looking for new tools, smarter tools, to further improve their business and contribute to a sustainable food production. Digitalization undoubtedly will play a crucial role. As one of the negotiators on the new common agricultural policy, as a shadow rapporteur for my political group, I would like to mention that we have fought hard for a more ambition for young farmers. Member states will be required to dedicate an amount corresponding, corresponding to at least 3% of the direct payments budget, especially to young farmers. They can do so by providing top-ups to direct payments, installation aid in the second pillar, or higher support rates to investments made by young farmers. There will be a possibility to give financial support for access to land for young farmers. There will also be possibilities to leverage financial instruments and access to credits. It will be of crucial importance that each member state in their national plan will be high, highly ambitious in their efforts for young farmers. The technology might be out there, but the dots need to be connected and digitalization also has to be accessible. Smart AgriHubs agri is dedicated to accelerate the digital transformation of the European agri-food agri sector. We are eager to hear from our speakers today on how we are moving forward in this respect. Well, that was a short introduction from my side. I would like now to introduce our first speaker, Diana Lenzi. Mrs. Lenzi is the newly elected president of the European Council of Young Farmers since June 21. Diana is a young farmer from Toscana, where she managed her family's winery. She cultivates and processes grapes, olives, olives and ancient grains for flour and pasta. Diana has been involved and active in Confa Agricultura, where she taking leadership roles at the regional and national level. The floor is yours. Mrs. Lindsay. Good morning to everyone uh, and thank you very much. It is a great honor to be able to kick off uh, this very interesting event today that wants to highlight the, the challenges, but I hope also the opportunities that we have in facing um, rural areas and seeing how by creating vibrant economies, we can bring a new generation of farmers into rural areas and help the agriculture of Europe. Uh, as it was just uh, recently stated, I am the newly elected president of SEJA, which is uh, an umbrella organization that uh, puts together 33 uh, young farmers associations from 23 member states in Europe. And this is the beauty of SEJA. We represent the farmers from all the different corners of Europe that have all the most 
different and diverse types of productions. And in Seja, we really try to make sure that when we come together, when we work on our position papers, when we confront with each other towards a topic, every voice, every experience, every need is taken into account and so that we can really bring out the voice of young farmers. Because it is not only an honor to be able to represent them now, um, to represent them, but it's also an honor to be able to represent them now because this is a very challenging moment for uh, agriculture. We are at the center of a great global debate that wants to make sure that agriculture does its part in becoming a more sustainable practice. And young farmers, of course, embrace this opportunity. They take this challenge on their shoulders and are happy to do their part. Um, because the elephant in the room, what is always uh, kind of underestimated is the fact that in order to succeed in this transition, it will take time. Nature has its own time. It takes time to uh, change practices, to transform uh, systems of production. And so it will be a, not a young generation that will have to take lead in this transition, that will have the responsibility of bringing this transition to accomplishment. Uh, and here comes the other elephant in the room. Uh, even if I, am, I represent as I said, 33 young farmers associations, young farmers in Europe are truly a minority. Only 11% of farms are run by someone under the age of 40 today. Actually, the data is from 2016 and nothing makes me think that today it will be actually better than in 2016 or, or more positive. And so we need to create some enabling conditions to bring in a new generation of young farmers that not only face those traditional roadblocks that have been already described, such as access to land and access to credit, but also that can find the, the will to go over the negative narrative that is uh, touching agriculture today. We always hear the negative elements being highlighted and never the fact that agriculture actually has a positive impact on landscapes, that we are custodians of our rural areas, that we create economies and vibrant rural communities through uh, our productions. And this is uh, one of the things that saddens me the most, because if we manage to create enabling conditions, and especially if we manage to tap into the full potential that there is today in agriculture, also by looking at how technology, research has improved our methods of production, has improved the way that we can work, I think that really we can uh, create those conditions that are necessary to bring in a new generation of young farmers. And as, um, as president of SEJA, I have started a, let's call it a seven step journey to sustainability in agriculture according to young farmers, because we want to take responsibility. We want to take action, but we need to be also very practical, very pragmatic. We need to find the solutions that we can apply in our farms at farm level to be more sustainable. Uh, a few days ago, someone said something very beautiful. Sustainability is about awareness. If you can actually truly take a full uh, acknowledgement of everything that is going on in your farm and hear the digital tools, the data that we can collect from satellites, from sensors, from the huge improvement that technology has brought in, and we can give that type of data to young farmers to see exactly what they can do, as I said, at farm level to improve their productions, their methods, their way of action, we will get to sustainability. It's not about creating a, a, a complicated recipe. It's about enabling farmers to really be um, in, the, in that full capacity of understanding what are the knots, what are the, the hinges that need to be adjusted in order to make the machine work uh, more properly. Uh, um, and one of the seven steps in our, in our uh, let's say, in our journey to sustainability is also about working on the farmers, on creating smart farmers, making sure that not only farm managers, so the people who run the farm, but also farm workers can appreciate, can um, also use at full, the full extent everything that technology is putting today at our service. 
And this is where also the policymakers need to help us because sometimes this type of um, this technology is very expensive. And for a young farmer, uh, access to credit is the second greatest roadblock. So we need to make sure that when we look at how we want to help young farmers, yes, we're very happy that there is, there's been a, a step forward in, in, let's say, the envelope that has been uh, allocated to young farmers, but we instead need to look at it in a 360 degree uh, vision and taking really uh, accompanying young farmers in this road, helping them access credit that can also help them access the technology that could help them improve their ways of production. So I'm very, lo I'm looking forward to hearing all of the other contributions because I've seen there's a, a great panel, but this was kind of a, a very fast insight as to what the young farmers are trying to, are facing and are going to face. Because as I said, we are going to take lead into becoming more sustainable. Thank you very much, um, Mrs. Lindsay, for your presentation, um, highlighting very clearly the pressing challenges for our young farmers. Um, so now we move to our next speaker. It's Adeline Chiyangsky. Mrs. Chiyangsky is the current vice president of the International Movement of Catholic Agriculture and Rural Youth, a platform representing the Catholic agriculture and rural youth movements in Europe. Mrs. Tijanski is from Bulgaria, where she is a freelance artist and an activist in the field of youth involvement in decision making on agriculture and sustainable development of rural areas. The floor is yours, Ms. Tijanski. I want to thank you for being here today. It's a real pleasure to represent Mijark and all youngsters that are part of the youth nowadays. I want to thank Lindsay for um, giving this boost in today's discussion. This was an amazing speech, I'd say. It motivated me as well. And um, as the Vice President of Mijark, I maybe want to start with what actually Mijark is all about. We want to be a key factor in the development of rural areas in Europe. So it's a really important key to represent the voice of rural youth where young people are equal citizens that encourage and support to achieve their full potential, of course, respecting the Christian values. Uh, our mission, maybe if I could brief it a little bit, is um, an independent democratic youth-led platform for rural youth, where youth can work on problems, can work on solutions, can be together. And we want to strive for the personal development of young people through non-formal learning opportunities. That's why we make so many seminars, we make so many panels. We want to contribute in the best way to show youngsters that we want to help them in any way possible when talking about agriculture, when talking about um, anything that is an issue for them in a sustainable and culturally sensitive manner, of course. Uh, we encourage the participation of young people to build the Europe of tomorrow. That's actually what we do. Um, to continue my, maybe the already given introduction, I want to say that uh, personally for me, I have encountered a little bit of challenges when it comes to youth in agriculture and in rural areas. I'd say that uh, in the first place, uh, it's insufficient access to knowledge, information, and education. And that's why it's so important to use the education and digitalization through making young people learn more about everything that is connected to rural youth and how they can be living in a sustainable environment and how they can be working on getting it better for the future. Um, poor and in, inadequate education limits productivity. That's a fact. And the acquisition of skills uh, and entrepreneurial ventures. Particularly in developed, in developed countries, there is a distinct need to improve young rural women access to education. So I guess that this is a key factor. And with technology, it can be really easily accessed, which is really an amazing opportunity. Um, the second challenge I'd say that I have identified is the limited access to land, which again is really important issue that has to be really worked on. Although access to land is fundamental to starting a farm, for example, it can often be difficult for young people to attain. I'd say that here in Bulgaria, because it's an important 
um, geographical destination, uh, it's uh, really hard as well. It's the main issue that has been set from quite a long time. So inheritance laws and custom in developing countries often make the transfer of land to young women problematic, for example, and so are in need of amendment. And there are the laws to, to assist them, but it's really, again, really tough. Uh, the third one, I'd say, is inadequate access to financial services. Again, finances are quite playing a big and important role. Um, I identify it as the third principal challenge. Most financial service providers are reluctant to provide their services, including credit, savings, and insurance to rule you due to the lack of collateral and financial literacy, among other reasons as well. Because young people are really new to all of this, but at the same time, they want to make the change. We, we want to make the change. And maybe the other key factors that I have thought about before today's discussion is the difficulties accessing green jobs. Uh, this is the fourth challenge. Mm, green jobs can provide more sustainable livelihoods in the long run and can be more labor intensive and ultimately evolve more value added. However, your youth may not have the skills or access to the necessary skills upgrading opportunities, which is the upgrade that is needed to partake in the green economy. So this has to be improved. And by improving your success to education and training, including formal and informal on-the-job training, what we are trying to do in Vijar, this is indeed to uh, redress this uh, skills mismatch. The first challenge, the fifth challenge, is limited access to markets. As without such access, uh, youth will not be able to engage in viable and sustainable agricultural ventures. Access to markets for youth is becoming even more difficult due to the growing international influence of supermarkets and the rigorous standards of their supply chains. This is a really uh, important and big topic that has to be thought about in um, detail. Um, as the last but uh, surely not the least important challenge, I would identify the limited involvement in policy dialogue. And this is my, let's say, favorite challenge. Because we in Mijarka are trying to do our best to get the youth involved when it when we speak about policy making, a policy dialogue, not only using youth as uh, that curtain that shows that youth is actually being involved but is not. We are trying to involve the youth in panel discussions, in discussions when talk when we talk about policy making, not only as the picture of all of this, as young people standing there. So too often young people's voices are not heard during the policy process. And so they're complex and multiply as a feature of your business. Uh, policies often fail to account, I would say, and um, to maybe end that speech. Um, it's important to make it so that the youth knows that it can make the change, not about the future, but about the present of Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Um, Tijonski, for your presentation. Um, we will move now to our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is Jeremy De Serle. Uh, Miss, Mrs., uh, Mr. De Serle is a French member of the European Parliament, member of the European Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development, and part of the Renew Europe Group. Before his election as European Parliament, Mr. De Serle was the president of the Young Farmers Union in France. And I would like to add that we have cooperated very closely as shadow rapporteurs in the reform of the new CAP and our joint effort for a high ambition for young farmers. We will now listen to the video message by Jeremy de Serle. Bonjour à tous, cher Bertian. Dommage que je ne puisse pas être présent avec vous ce matin pour de simples difficultés techniques d'interprétation. Il y a encore du boulot à faire pour assurer le multilinguisme à Bruxelles. 
mais je crois que ça va aller car nous parlons finalement un peu tous la même langue autour de cette table, celle de l'agriculture. En tant qu'ancien président du syndicat français Jeunes Agriculteurs, je ne reste pas totalement insensible au sujet de cette première table ronde sur les défis rencontrés par les jeunes agriculteurs. Plus que des défis, ce sont parfois encore des obstacles insurmontables qui découragent un certain nombre de jeunes de s'installer. L'état démographique en agriculture s'en ressent. Aujourd'hui, en Europe, seuls 5% des agriculteurs ont moins de 35 ans. C'est un problème majeur pour l'avenir de notre agriculture, pour le renouvellement des générations, mais aussi pour le bien-être de nos campagnes. Aujourd'hui, avec ma casquette de député européen, je continue modestement mon travail entamé il y a longtemps sur cette question. Ma croyance, en gros, il faut aujourd'hui une véritable feuille de route pour les jeunes en agriculture, comprenant une série d'actions coordonnées et combinées visant tant à modifier si nécessaire la législation qu'à offrir un accompagnement adapté sur le terrain. Dans le cadre de la réforme de la PAC que nous venons de finir de négocier, nous sommes parvenus à mettre un peu plus l'accent sur les jeunes en augmentant l'aide aux jeunes. C'est un pas dans la bonne direction, mais il reste encore beaucoup à faire et à créer pour notamment encore mieux prendre en compte l'actif dans le cadre du versement des aides PAC. Une telle évolution encouragerait l'installation des jeunes à n'en pas douter. Et la, tro la troisième révolution à mener et à laquelle le projet Smart AgriHubs contribue est celle du numérique, de la génétique et de la robotique. C'est à travers de telles solutions innovantes qu'on pourra garantir le maintien de nos productions et ainsi participer à l'installation des jeunes en agriculture. Je vous souhaite de beaux échanges ce matin et sachez ma disponibilité pour travailler ensemble à aider la jeunesse agricole européenne. Thank you very much, uh, dear colleague, for your clear uh, message. Now we will move to our last speaker of this session. It's Doris uh, Markar. Doris, Dr. Doris Markar works for the European Commission in the Directorate General for Agriculture and Rural Development. Her work focuses on the digitalization of the agricultural sector and rural areas, and more specifically, uh, at research and innovation, the common agricultural policy, the Digital Europe program and Horizon 2020, and now Horizon Europe programs. The floor is yours, Dr. Markart. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the kind introduction and thank you for having me. After now having heard about the challenges about by the other speakers, I would like now to shed light um, of the opportunities and factors encouraging and enabling young farmers, giving special attention under the tools available under the future common agriculture policy. Before discussing into detail, let's have a brief look what constitutes farming. Farming is more than a business, and that needs also to be considered when thinking about encouraging and enabling young farmers. Farming is also a passion, ideally, and farming is also embedded into regions. So that means the decision to take over a farm or to set up a new farm is a personal one which may depend next to the availability of land and financial resources on personal capabilities, family, on our expectations, and the situation of potential farmers vary. With the new CAP, special attention will be given to the needs of young farmers. There's a specific objective, number seven, as we have already heard about, to attract and sustain young farmers and other new farmers in sustainable development and rural areas. What is important to know that the socioeconomic, environmental, and here also the regulatory framing conditions vary between member states 
And there's not one solution defined at European level to support the development of young farmers. Within the CAP strategic plans, member states have to identify strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, as well as needs for specific objectives. And potential needs to address the specific objective seven may include, for instance, the facilitation of access to land, funding and guarantees access to credits, the level of income, new technologies, or more education efforts but also to provide incentives for new businesses in rural areas, which might be of cross-sectoral interest, and to increase to the attractiveness of rural areas. So looking at the specific objective seven in the CAP strategic plan, a number of CAP tools are available to support the ambitions and to encourage and enable young farmers. We have already heard about the opportunity that member states have um, with a new policy includes the earmarking of an amount of corresponding to at least 3% of the member states envelope for direct payments to support young farmers. The support may be granted as enhanced income support or set up aid or new young farmers as well as investment support but also capacity building measures can be tailored to the needs of young farmers. For instance, capacities in business and know-how, for instance, can be strengthened through the support of, of cooperation. Moreover, member states will have to reinforce their farm advisory system and the agriculture knowledge and innovation systems. The European Innovation Partnership with its links to Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe will continue. Beyond the measures directly tailored to the needs of young farmers, all the measures strengthening the attractiveness of regions, motivating young farmers and other young persons in general to stay in rural areas might be decisive. And it's a future common agriculture policy, all support to leader and smart villages, for instance, will be possible. Now, the webinar sheds light on a very specific and important subject, the relation of young farmers, technologies, and innovation. Young farmers are key to boost innovation in the agriculture sector, and subsequently also to increase its sustainability, performance, and competitiveness. Yet, for sure, I know farmers of higher age still keen to test and develop innovative solutions, yet by trend, Young farmers, for instance, have a higher level of digital skills and they bring inspiration back from universities to their farms. On the other hand, young farmers benefit from innovation, including technologies and social innovation, and may achieve competitive advantages. Regional innovation ecosystems are essential to capitalize ideas, upskill innovation, to mobilize and support young entrepreneurs. I am pleased to see that the region proactively supports this webinar, ideally for the development of new enterprises in rural areas, which are not only attractive as it regards the quality of life, but also create an enabling business environment, for instance, through clusters. In the field of agriculture, such regional innovation ecosystem can start, for instance, with a network of EIP, European Innovation Partnership, operational groups digital or other innovation hubs which cover technological and social innovation and which link innovators with the end users, such as farmers, build up the capacities to effectively deploy innovative solutions and which can also create an innovative innovation ecosystem. Examples can be found, with, for instance, within the project Smart Agri Hubs, but digital innovation hubs will also be supported under the forthcoming Digital Europe program. And we will learn about them more in a, the next session. This slide is intended to sum up the presentation and the factors influencing young farmers' decision to take over or set up farms, as well as measures, particularly measures under the future common agriculture 
policy available to member states to support young farmers. I hope it has become obvious that more than direct business support is essential to mobilize young farmers. Support to innovation, innovative processes, networking, and the deployment of rural regions, or the development of rural regions, appear to be decisive factors as well. And at this point, finally, I wish to highlight that in 2021, the Commission has put forward a long term vision for rural areas. The aim is to address specific challenges and explore innovative, inclusive, and sustainable solutions to coop keep rural areas attractive as listening spaces. If we do not manage to support young people to make a decent living in rural areas, we will lose at multiple fronts. I would like to thank the organizers, having teamed up, bringing together players key to create an environment to encourage and enable young farmers. Events like this, are important to inform policy making processes, not only at European level, but also at national level, particularly in times where CAP strategic plans are shaped. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. And I would like to thank all our speakers for their very interesting and stimulating contribution. Um, we will move to now to our question and answer session. So uh, please let us know your questions and our panel uh, will be ready to provide you with their views. Let me have a short um, in the, uh, look in the chat. Um, so please, when you have a question, let us know. Um, personally, I have a, a question maybe for uh, our three panelists um, about, uh, let's say, the international context of uh, the issue we discussed. Um, for digitalization, how are we doing in Europe compared to, uh, to our competitors? Uh, looking at the United States, for example, uh, the farms are much bigger in size, so return on investments for digitalization and precision farming is much more easy uh, in, in, in a country like the United States. So my question is, how do you view this uh, with respect to young farmers in, in Europe? Um, would we need, for example, more public uh, support? Uh, when you had compared to the, our main competitors uh, in the United States, for example. Uh, Mrs. Lindsay, may I ask you first to react on that? Of course. Um, I think we can't truly compare apples with pears. Uh, they are still fruit. No, agriculture is still agriculture, but Europe is, is a different, has a different history, has a different story, has a, a diversity that is our true richness. So also the size of our, of our farms is smaller and uh, what we need to create is competitiveness even for a small farm and sustainability even for a small farm. So we need to find the correct set of tools for our farming, for our European farming. Um, the global context where I would like to, to stress is instead that if we de decide we have the highest standards of production, we have the highest standards of safety, and we are now deciding that we're going to have the highest standards towards sustainability, which is beautiful. I love to be in Europe. I love to, to be the flagship of sustainable farming for the world. But it also means we have to have policies that then are coherent and that can help us make sure that this flagship does not become uh, doesn't turn against us, that when we, we deal with trade, when we deal with laws of competitiveness, uh, that these standards are the standards we apply to everything that is also imported to the US, which is the one thing we're slight, for, sorry, to, to Europe. Um, the other thing I would like to say is that this set of tools and of instruments that we need to give farmers to enable them to be more competitive, actually that needs to be something that can be applicable 
if we have this technology, but then this technology gets lost in the digital divide, in the fact that we still do not have broadband coverage in rural areas, and so this technology cannot be used, we are again losing a great opportunity because technology will keep on evolving. So it will become more sophisticated. But if we don't adapt our infrastructure to the technology that we have today, by the time we will adapt it to the technology of today, the technology of tomorrow will need again another jump. So we need to speed up. And I think that is where we can also concentrate a lot of investments and in making sure that the digital coverage or that the digital divide is finally really addressed and solved because otherwise we'll keep on using these instruments at 50% of their potential, like my president in, in Italy, who has to make sure he's always there when his tractor goes to the end of the field because it doesn't read the satellite that tells him that the end of the field is actually a cliff and his tractor is going to go into the sea if he doesn't make sure that he stops it in time. So just a, a funny anecdote, but it's uh, on a true problem. We have a technology that could help us also give that different narrative of a farming that doesn't mean you need to be an attractor 14 hours a day, that some of the hard labor that is in farming has been taken off our shoulders, but then this technology needs to be actually applicable to the rural areas in which we want to use it. Thank you very much for your clear uh, answer. Um, um, I saw that we uh, that we uh, got another question. Uh, it's a question for Miss Makar. Um, let me read the question. I I received it in the chat. I will read it now. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Can I ask do Can I ask you have a research in member states? Do you have a research in member states? how farming is seen in urban areas of member states regarding the prestige situation. Uh, what are the society expectations, particularly young people from farming sector? My second question, do you think that vertical and horizontal cooperation in farming sector will easier with digital technologies and through hubs? So what, how do you, would you can you respond to, you, to this question? Mrs. Uh, yes, thank you for the question. I would say that are probably two questions. Let's me start with the first one. Um, let's say the, the view of the urban population on farming and the attitude towards farming. Um, I would not say that we have a dedicated one project, but we are aware of research and let's say um, surveys about um, the attitude of urban citizens and other citizens or non-agriculture citizens on farming. I think that is quite important also to communicate the acceptance and explain what is farming about also to urban citizens and the challenging going along with the agriculture sector. And um, for instance, there's frequently the image or the assumption that um, more technologies go along with for conventional farms, for instance, but technologies can also help, um, let's say, organic farms. So there are different uh, images and it's quite important to achieve, first of all, a study of the attitude and assumptions in the urban population, but then also address those and maybe correct if needed with dedicated communication to urban citizens. Regarding the um, second um, question, as it regards digitalization and the support and enabling to um, digitalization through cross-sectoral collaboration and the whole of digital innovation hubs. I think um, it's not one solution, which is the key solution for all member states. The situation of digitalization in member states varies for instance, we cannot compare the Netherlands with Romania or Bulgaria. It varies also between regions and we have to avoid digital divides, not only between regions, but also between types of farms, for instance, small and large ones. And in this context, I would like to point to the requirement for member states within their hub strategic plans to, to elaborate digitalization strategies, which can then address the specific needs in their country to boost digitalization across farms and to avoid digital divides between farms. And here for sure, digital innovation hubs 
can play a key role and also to facilitate cross-sectoral collaboration um, to boost digitalization. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we received different questions. I have unfortunately to choose uh, because uh, uh, we are a little bit otherwise running out of time. Um, I will take just one question and maybe you can reply to the other questions in, in, in written, for example. Um, but I will give the opportunity for, uh, for let's say, one specific question. Um, the question is, um, um, is there a specific Horizon Europe call de dedicated to young farmers? That's a really concrete question. Maybe, Ms. Makai, you can reply to that question. Thank you for the question. Um, I am not aware of a specific call dedicated to young farmers. There are a lot of calls related to capacity building, so going beyond technological innovation, but including the dimension of social innovation. So there they are expected to consider young farmers, but not explicitly one call only dedicated to the needs of young farmers. What is important to highlight is that we have, for instance, a call dedicated to the needs of small farmers and the creating an enabling and encouraging environment to the uptake of digital technologies and to provide digital solutions um, for small farms. What I, I like, would like to highlight is that several calls related to technologies have a strong focus on business models and social innovation as well, and meaning then to look at the farming that's the population, the farmer's population, and to make it feasible to ensure the uptake of technologies developed within Horizon Europe or at the moment also still Horizon 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Well, before we close the session, uh, last question to Mrs. Sijansky. Um, um, before we close the session, uh, is there maybe a, a, an important message you would, would like to share with us uh, in, let's say, creating more possibilities for young farmers in rural developments? When I would like to ask in just one, two sentences, what is your main message you would share with us? Uh, thank you for giving me the floor for this final words. I'd say that, as I already mentioned, there are quite a lot of opportunities for a youngster to seek support and to do things. And what he has to do is to truly believe in, his, in himself. And additionally, as I already mentioned, the youth of Europe is not the future, but the present of Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now round up this session. Uh, we have discussed the challenges encountered by young farmers. Uh, it became clear that the challenges are huge and becoming quite urgent regarding from access to land, access to credit, uh, uncertainties uh, in relation to regulations and so on. But despite these challenges, we have reason for hope. Um, we have heard the spirit of entrepreneurship and lots of ideas on how to connect the dots and these give us lessons on how to support and assist young farmers in their efforts for future proving their family businesses. I would like once again thank our speakers for sharing this insight, their insights and I'm sure today is not the last time we meet let us continue our conversation and efforts to ensure the future of our food production and rural areas of Europe. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ruysen, for, uh, for chairing this uh, first session. Actually, uh, together with the speakers, you, you set the scene and also uh, already uh, how can we come from targets more to tools? Uh, but in the end, in the end, in the end this is, now we have an echo here. Uh, in the end, uh, it's all about uh, sustainability and awareness, as said by uh, Mrs. Lenzi. And probably technology and the digital tools will help uh, young farmers uh, with this. And this is actually also the bridge to our second session. And that is how digital innovation hubs can help to overcome present obstacles 
of, uh, of agriculture. And I would like to give the floor to the chair, Mr. George Beers. You have the floor, sir. Okay, thanks, Edwin. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to, um, to, to have this opportunity to discuss uh, about digital innovation hubs and young farmers. I am really intrigued in this, uh, this relation. Um, when I was reading the, the, the title of this session, how the digital innovation hubs can help to overcome present obstacles of agriculture, I was thinking, hey, uh, we have a solution, but what was the problem again? Um, I think it's clear that uh, agricultural is uh, facing many uh, issues, many challenges, I prefer to call them. Environmental, economic, social, food security, all kinds of issues. Um, but I think it's important now that we focus on, uh, on digital. And uh, we assume that the digital technology is really needed to, uh, to sustain uh, agriculture in, in Europe. Um, so, what are now the obstacles for using digital technology to improve uh, to, uh, to the sustainability of uh, agriculture? I think, well, there are some, uh, some general aspects. The skills, I think, is uh, addressed in uh, all sectors. Uh, it's a it's, uh, funding issue. It's uh, access to, 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 uh, to the technology. Uh, but I was wondering, and I think that could be a nice uh, perspective of this, uh, this session, is what are the specific uh, obstacles in agriculture? And how can these tech be tackled? How can these, uh, these obstacles for introducing and uh, implementing digital technology in agriculture, how can that be uh, enhanced? Uh, and how can the obstacles be tackled? And what are the requirements of digital innovation hubs for that? Um, as we are working now for, uh, for uh, almost three years in the Smart Agri Hubs project, uh, we are, uh, let's say, thinking and experimenting with this uh, this issue and we found out that uh, there are some some let's say requirements on, on digital innovation hubs they have to be proximity of the farmer is important uh, close to farmers and i think uh, it's also important that we digital innovation hubs are trusted by farmers um, as uh, uh, as already mentioned uh, connecting dots is important connecting dots between digital innovation hubs so they can make a be a community that, that uh, helps each other, supports each other. But it's also connecting to the, let's say, the state of the art, not only by having access to competence centers and know where they are and where the, the heat is on and where you can really uh, uh, see the, the state of the art, but it's also about the innovation portal in which we are collecting and uh, uh, all the, let's say, the, the experiments, all the, uh, the, the lessons learned and the tools that we developed. Um, I think we did some, uh, some exercise on the digital innovation hubs. We now have already 300 uh, uh, hubs uh, in our project. And we, uh, did, we asked them to do a self-assessment. So how mature is the digital innovation hub on the different types of services they need to provide? On the technology, on the business development, or uh, the, the funding, the access to funding. And we found out that the most critical one at the moment is the ecosystem development. So the connection with the, your local partners, your local, uh, 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 the local, the community. And it's not only about farmers, it's about the tech providers, it's about the suppliers of farmers, it's about the customers of the farmers, it's about the advisory services, so the whole community around the farming and how to connect them to the digital innovation hub. And I'm very curious to hear how the young farmers can play a role in this. I would, uh, and uh, I think it's good to have uh, a nice uh, set, uh, lineup of, uh, of speakers for this session. So we will start with uh, Heidi Sigan from uh, DigiConnect. Then we have uh, Christian Bratu from the cooperatives perspective. And from the tech perspective, we have Sergio Telesco. And then we have also from the uh, Parliament, we have uh, Dargas Tudorac uh, with the video. So I am um, just to, um, to uh, speed up. I want to start with uh, introducing uh, Heidi Sigan. Heidi Sigan is uh, working for DigiConnect. 
and uh, she's an economist. Uh, she has worked since for DG Connect already many years, I would say, 13 years, I see, and uh, uh, on economic impact of digital technology, but also on the digital, digital skills policy. And uh, currently she is um, very prominent working on the digital innovation hubs in society. Heidi, can I give you the floor? Yes, thank you very much. I just uh, share my presentation. There we go. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay, very good. So, uh, as was just introduced, I'm Heidi Segan. I come from the uh, Digital Transformation of Industrial Ecosystems unit from DigiConnect. Uh, and I'm very happy to be here today to discuss this very important topic with you and to share with you the work that we're doing on supporting digital innovation hubs and therefore the digitization of businesses in Europe, including uh, those in agriculture. So with its digital decade, the commission is seeking a great leap forward in digitalization of the economy and society for the benefit of citizens and businesses. And by doing so, it also supports, um, seeks to support the green transition. Um, and this is something that we call the, the twin transition um, because we think that both digital and green must go together. The coronavirus pandemic uh, um, and its impact on our lives and businesses has made it evident uh, that what the benefits of digital technologies are for our resilience to crises. Um, but it has also laid bare how lack of digitization can leave us uh, quite vulnerable. Businesses with insufficient levels of digitization in effect had to shut up shop in, in many cases and in many sectors. So what is the, the state of digitization in, in Europe today? Well, this question was asked a little bit earlier about you know, how we compare to, to other regions of the world. And unfortunately, Europe is lagging in the digitization of its businesses. Uh, almost 40% of SMEs don't even have a basic level of digital intensity. Um, and the adoption of advanced digital technologies is also behind. The uptake of AI in cloud is around 25%. And that of big data is 14%, though we are seeing quite good growth. And then, of course, uh, as was also alluded to a little bit earlier, there are quite differences um, across countries and sectors. Um, so we can see that whereas, um, you know, Ireland, Finland, Netherlands, Belgium, etc., um, are very highly digitized countries, um, those in Romania, um, Bulgaria, Hungary, Poland, etc., um, are, have significantly less digitized businesses. And then also we can see this by sector uh, and agriculture in particular and construction are two of the sectors where digitization rates are particularly low. So the commission has come forward with what it calls its digital compass to try and put targets on achieving um, a better digitization of its businesses and of its economy and society by 2030. And these targets revolve around skills, digitization of public services, infrastructure, and of course, digitalization, transformation of business. So what are the targets for digitalization of business? Um, well, firstly, they are to try to reach a level of around 70% 75% take up of advanced technologies like AI, big data and cloud, um, but also um, to increase the basic digitization of basic digital intensity of firms. So to try to get at least basic digital intensity of 90% of, of firms. And then there's also a target on the sort of uh, digital leaders, the so-called unicorns, to try and double their number to, to 250. So this shows you a little bit about where we are today in terms of the targets. Um, and, and as I said, you can see that the advanced technologies, it's, it's quite a way to go still to get to 75%. Um, yeah, and the, the basic digital intensity is also, the target of 90% is really quite challenging. So 
as I've mentioned, uh, businesses in rural and agricultural areas are some of the least digitized, but in fact, they're one, the ones which have the most to gain from digitalization. Digital technologies have the potential to revolutionize agriculture by helping farmers to work more precisely, efficiently, and sustainably. Data-driven insights can improve decision-making and practices and help increase environmental performance while they're making the job a lot more attractive for, for young generations. So we've heard a little bit about what the barriers are to digitalization in agriculture. I, I think one of the biggest things is that we're starting from quite a, a low starting point. So it's, it's, it's a big hurdle to get started. Um, you know, when a young person or, or you know, is, is thinking or a young farmer is thinking, you know, how do I digitize my, benef benef uh, my business, sorry. They, they go through a number of questions and think to themselves, you know, what are the benefits? You know, do they outweigh the costs? This is something very critical. You know, you know, which technologies are there and which are the right ones for my business? How do I even get started? Um, where can I get help? Um, I, I need training. How and where can I get training? How and, and where can I get the staff or the, you know, the external experts that I need to help me? And crucially, you know, how do I get funding? How do I get the money to, to do these investments? So digital innovation hubs can, can help the, reduce the barriers to digitalization. You can consider them as, as one-stop shops, basically, for digital transformation of a business. Um, they provide all kinds of services that can really help a business, including agricultural businesses, digitize. So one of the first things that they do is that they can provide a digital maturity assessment so they can look at the business and they can say, you know, how digitized is your business already? You know, what would you need to do to, to improve your business? They can help give advice on how to digitally transform the business, you know, changing business models or adapting business models. They can give advice on technologies. Um, they can also give access to technologies to test before investing because obviously finance is, is a crucial thing and you want to make sure that if you take on a technology um, that it's really going to have a difference for your business. Um, it can also provide links to local, local businesses, providing technologies and technological services. It can provide training and also crucially uh, support to accessing finance. So uh, support to digitalization, uh, to digital innovation hubs um, was already made under Horizon 2020. We know, of course, the, the Smart Agri, uh, Agri Hubs uh, project has been very, very successful. Um, I have here in my slide that you have 155 plus uh, hubs in the network, but I, uh, I understand that it's uh, much more than that. Um, and then, of course, there's another project called the Agro, uh, Agrobo Food Project, um, which is also it's a hub that's dealing specifically with, with robots in agriculture. So um, under the new Digital Europe program, um, we will be increasing our support to digital innovation hubs. And what we're doing in particular is we're setting up a network of European digital innovation hubs. Um, so the Commission is providing 750 million euros to support the setup of an EU-wide network of over 200 European digital innovation hubs. The front funds from digital will be complemented by member states' contributions. So there is, you know, there is a 50% co-funding rate. And this could also possibly include private sector contributions. Um, a number of member states have also opted to fund extra hubs, so around, we think around 50, 30 to 50. Um, through digital financing opportunities under the Resilient, Recovery and Resilience Fund. Um, because as I, I think perhaps you know, um, under the RRF, um, over 20% is dedicated to digital reforms and initiatives. And member states have taken up this opportunity and uh, in particular, um, this, the extra hubs is something that will be funded by, by about nine member states. And also member states can also make use of something called synergy funding possibilities to fund their hubs. Um, and this is something that's, that's come in under the, the RRF that says, and in the new financial framework, that says that, um, you know, where the conditions for both um, programs are given, then um, funds can be combined. So here you can see the, um, 
planned budget for the first three years of the initiative. Um, and you can see uh, the number of hubs varies uh, between member states, depending obviously on their size. And here we can see already the, the candidate hubs because um, the selection of the network of hubs. I'm sorry, I can hear somebody's. Um, in, I can see hear somebody in the background. Anyway, um, so the the start of the selection procedure uh, procedure has already taken place. Member states have now selected their pre-selected their candidate hubs, uh, and what we can see here is the distribution of the candidate hubs. Uh, across specializations and across sectors. So you can see good coverage of, of different technologies um, in these candidate hubs. And uh, crucially, what you can see here is that uh, 64 uh, in the agri-food sector have, um, have been pre-selected. And already take a look at the, the hubs that have been pre-selected as candidates. Um, One minute to go, uh, Adi. Okay, Please. thank you. Um, so you can see here that there is a, we have a, a catalog of, of the EDIH and, uh, you know, you can have access obviously to this presentation and then you can follow the link and you can have a look at the, the different hubs in uh, that will be candidates. So what are the next steps? So we have our candidate hubs selected by the member states on the basis of uh, open procedures, open national procedures. And now the next stage is the EU restricted call to which the pre-selected hubs can apply. So we envisage that the call will be opened on the 17th of November. It will close on the 21st of February. Then we'll follow an evaluation uh, period. Uh, and if information on the evaluation results will be made uh, available at the end of May 2022. And then so we can see the, the signature of the grants towards the end of November. Um, so this will create the first initial uh, set of hubs, but um, if there is funding left over, then there will be a second call. And in the second call, those uh, hubs that weren't successful in the first round will have another opportunity to apply. And then if there is any funding left after that, which is probably unlikely, but it can be the case, then there's the option to have a third call, which will be fully open. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Heidi. It's um, yeah, very interesting you, uh, uh, to, to, to see the program on digital innovation hubs uh, and uh, in particular it's interesting to see how agricultural uh, the sector is operating compared to other sectors and uh, interesting uh, point of view. Thank you, thank you. Um, time is running so um, let's uh, roll. And let's go to the next uh, speaker, which is uh, Christian uh, Bratou. Uh, he's working for the University of Bucharest, uh, specialized in agriculture and rural development. But moreover, he's vice president of the cooperative with a long name, which you probably can pronounce yourself best. Okay, Christian, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, my name is Christian Bratou, and I'm a young farmer from Romania. Uh, at this time, I manage a farm in the arable sector, mainly cereals and orchard crops. I am also the vice president of an uh, agriculture cooperative, namely the Agriculture Cooperative Production and Processing Region South. The agriculture cooperative consists of both vegetable farms uh, with more than 120 members working more than uh, uh, 15,000 hectares, as well as uh, seed grain and uh, oil seed processors. Young farmers in the cooperative account for more than 85% uh, of all existing members. The main challenges that we believe are ahead of us uh, are related to preventing and uh, minimizing adverse effects uh, related to climate risk, compliance with the new eco-green conditionalities, established by the European Union and ensuring our viability uh, in a highly competitive and volatile, volatile market. Our cooperative has started to develop a new strategic role of an agri-food agri digital innovation hub in order to be able to provide the due time 
the fullest possible set of services. For, uh, first of all, uh, to our members to meet the above mentioned challenges. The role is uh, linked to the adoption of a digital solution to access uh, to funding, both uh, of uh, cooperative and uh, at the level of the members farmers. In this respect, the cooperative has uh, already developed a system of support services and consultancy in the field of agriculture to access uh, to European funds. We are currently developing more than 100 proposals for investment projects for the acquisition of digital solution for collecting soil and agrometeo uh, data and fund level and cooperative global management software application. Digital solutions have, uh, have been selected following studies in this uh, emerging market, including uh, those development uh, under smart agri hubs where we benefit from the continuous support of the Southeast Europe regional cluster and generally fall under the categories of IoT sensors and uh, precision agriculture embedded uh, in intelligent agriculture machinery. Our intention is to store the data collected uh, at individual farm level within a system database to process data through data analytics modules to be able to simulate different production scenarios. And finally, with result providing an efficient support to uh, the farmer decision-making processes such as optimizing the production processing with env environmentally friendly practices in time efficient harvesting of the final production decision support to prevent adverse effects associated with uh, climate risk, storage of uh, a uh, free period of all the uh, information of the weather conditions on farms and receive alerts up to five days before various weather disasters, example, barn, hail, frost, etc. The technical assistance related to the realization of investment project by accessing European funds is carried out uh, periodically within the cooperative by conducting virtual video session with uh, all the members of the cooperative, when they are informed about the possibilities of accessing finance uh, on open uh, act, uh, open calls once and those uh, available in the next period of time. In relation of their fields of activity, the type of investment desired to be accessed, as well as the condition regarding the eligibility uh, of the farmer. In this way, <clears throat> the farmer are informed about uh, the European fowls in due time. An uh, extremely positive and really beneficial fact uh, in that the needs analysis assessment, assessment carried about, uh, out by the Ministry of Agriculture for the financial exercise 2021-2025 uh, uh, clearly result uh, the need to adopt digital solutions. And this result in the authority's decision to priority, uh, priorities project proposals, including digitalization. From the point of the view of the young farmer, I believe that both of uh, national legislation in force uh, and uh, the non-refundable European funds that are made available to us compete ours and uh, in uh, an agriculture which. Uh, with an uh, increased uh, contribution of the dig uh, digitalization provided by our digital innovation hubs, will become environmental and climate friendly, more resilient and viable in the future to come, which really motivate young people to become young farmers. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, uh, Christian. Great to uh, to have uh, to 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 hear about a digital innovation hub in action. So practical and the real stuff, the real work. Thank you, thank you for giving us your insights on that. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next speaker, which is uh, Sergio, Sergio Terrasca. Sergio is a computer techni technician uh, with a lot of experience and he's were involved in the boot project. Uh, and uh, Mr. Terrasca is, um, uh, I was intrigued by your work in the soft skills. So I hope to hear more from that. The floor is yours. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, with me, there is Giovanni Pergola, co-founder of Bolt, the startup we are talking about. Good morning. Nice to be here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mentioned the soft skill of speaking English because uh, an event like this needs uh, to be speak, uh, spoken in English. So let's uh, move fast because I know the time is short. So we are an innovative startup, which name came from the Erzman constellation that was born from the need of Antonio's livestock farm to improve the control over his cattle because he have over 400 um, uh, cows, uh, mostly gaze free uh, on the hills and mountains. So it's a difficult job to keep track of them and uh, they need a, a tool to make this job less hard because uh, um, Erzman is um, a job that need to, to, despite the cold, the snow, the adverse condition, need to supervise the herd uh, in person. So we think about uh, a simple device that can be burned by the cattle to record the, all the movements of the position and some information through this life and make it available on smartphone so that the, the Erzman can keep track very easily of the position. I would like to let you see this small video. I don't know if you can hear the song, but it's just... Uh... Yes. So what we tried to achieve was a small device that you can see uh, we, tool, uh, we developed several iterations until we arrived at the last device that is this one visibly smaller and more practical to install uh, and with a structure that is more attentive to the environment and does not disturb the animal because the animal can be pretty nervous when you put something on him. So um, in the, we running the project for four years and in the last two years, which um, we have mm, collected some data and we observed that we had a 30% reduction in fuel consumption for all the, the travel the Earthman need to do a 50% reduction in workplace accident, accident because when an airman have to uh, go in the woods, it can be risky. A reduction of 80% of trespassing of cattle to other pastures. A greater control over pastures and what the cow eats, because we know where it, uh, the, the cattle are, are. Improvement of the use of workers' resources. An absolute control over milk and meat origin. And uh, prevention of wolf and wild boars attack. To, to the cattle and increase the involvement of young people because uh, one of the, uh, the, the difficulties that um, uh, a farm have is to find some young people interested in the job. It's an art job and it's another working. All of this was possible thanks to System Incubatory di Impresa, which is a digital innovation hub uh, like uh, those promoted by Smart Agri Hubs. And the uh, system incubatory is uh, promoted by the Basilicata region and they seem it at promoting um, uh, and launching innovative startup uh, with high knowledge content and developing an integration between uh, the research and the technology transfer system and the business system uh, following the S3 regional uh, uh, lines like uh, aerospace, uh, automotive, bioeconomy, energy, cultural, and creative industry. So, we with them we were able to present the patent because both is is patented. Develop the project, do lobbying and networking. We reach out. Uh, we reach the uh, the technology readiness level eight, which means that we are practically ready for marketing. 
And in general, we had uh, an, excel, uh, an excellent support uh, for our acceleration. One uh, a wonderful experience uh, that we shared with them was uh, our participation in SMAU, the many innovative uh, innovation fair in Italy. And uh, those, all the, of these services uh, are um, like what Smart Agriab focuses. One minute, uh, Sergio. Yeah, of course. Uh, so to the, look into the future, we want to make uh, the system marketable, integrate the system uh, with the blockchain to verify the, the origin of the product, uh, helping uh, breeders hard work uh, and take advantage of all the curiosity around the technology to attract more younger people. We, we had the um, Agenda for Sustainable Development 2020 as our compost to make the, all, all this project uh, sustainable. And uh, I finally will allow me to thank uh, in my name and Giovanni Pergola and Antonio Pestolani, who is the other co-founder of BOTA, uh, we would like to thank School Diretti Basilicata for the continuous and constant help it provides us on a daily basis, School Diretti Italia for the support on, uh, through, through the country, and finally Smart Agri Hubs for international support and having us here. So thank you everybody. And... Okay, thanks uh, Sergio, thanks uh, for this uh, uh, very uh, clear presentation about uh, what's, what's, what digital, digitalization is about. Thank you. Uh, um, yeah, time is running, I wish we had more time, but um, uh, uh, the next part is, the, is a small video uh, by um, Ioan Dragas Tudorac. And Mr. Tudorac is the Romanian member of the European Parliament and he's the chair of the Special Committee on Artificial Intelligence in a Digital Age. He's also a member of the Renew Europe Group. Okay, here we go. Good morning. Many thanks for inviting me to your event and apologies for not being able to be live with you in what I am sure is a very interesting conversation, particularly if I look at the topics and the questions that you've chosen for your debate. Uh, and I will take the question that you sent me, which is uh, to say how technology can help and contribute uh, for the young generations uh, finding a fulfilling life in a rural area. Um, I will start with something that is very dear to my heart, uh, because I chair the Artificial Intelligence Special Committee in the European Parliament, and that is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, which is one of the driving forces behind the digital revolution that we live today, uh, can tremendously transform agriculture, can change the way our farms are managed, and that's where the young generation, boys and girls, can actually help their parents, they can help their communities being digitally native and having by far uh, better skills, better digital skills than, than their parents or their grandparents, they can actually help farms be modern. Uh, we can have algorithms that are predicting weather patterns and that can help in the way we plan our crops. There are technologies today that can measure uh, nutrients, they can measure the degree of moisture in the soil and generally there is technology today that can actually change, revolutionize completely the way farming is being done. Of course, there is the issue of accessibility to these technologies and also literacy to be able to use these technologies. But I was saying earlier, as digitally native, I think this generation, the younger generation, can have a much more uh, capable contribution uh, to the transformation of the way agriculture is being done. And if they stay in those rural areas, if they stay in the communities where they were born or where they decide to live uh, because they like living in a rural area, I think, again, they can have this, this tremendous contribution to farming and to agriculture. The second element is that can actually, you can actually do today with the digital tools that we have, you can do sitting in a village almost everything you can do if you sit in a big city. And why is that? Because 
particularly now after the pandemic, we see that we are living our professional lives, we are living our personal life, we can interact with our um, bosses, with our colleagues, we can send our homework or send our contribution to a project by sitting at home, by being remote somewhere where, and this is the important part, where we have access to digital infrastructure. And this is where the uh, link between um, the life of a, of a young boy or girl in a village becomes very important because for them to actually be able to anchor their futures in a, in a village, they need to have access to digital infrastructure. And this is where the role of the state comes in. It is essential that states at the European level are investing public money to ensure that there are no more white areas on the map when it comes to connectivity. This is where the uh, new allocations under the uh, recovery uh, fund uh, post-COVID comes in. You know that uh, minimum 20% of this uh, money has to be allocated to digital. And if I look, for example, at the choices that Romania has made in uh, PNRR, uh, a good part of that money will go to connectivity. And I think that's, that's key. Because again, by having access to good broadband internet, by having access to, to, to mobile uh, networks, then you can do all of the things that I mentioned earlier. And then the third element is, is literacy in education. Um, for, for being able to access and to be an integral part of, of this uh, digital transformation, we have to have those skills, we have to have those competences. And, even though, as I was saying earlier, our young girls and boys, they are born into this technology and therefore they're finding it much easier than it is for us uh, to, to, to use technology, to deploy, to adapt to its, uh, to its uh, transformations, education remains key. Because critical thinking, the ability to, to uh, innovate, uh, the entrepreneurial spirit that needs to be so um, so well cultivated if we are to rip the benefits of digital transformation is something that has to be learned, has to be studied, has to be part of the curricula and that regardless of whether again we live in, in rural or in urban areas. So with all of these, uh, with, with the role that technologies can play in uh, agriculture, with how um, uh, digital tools based on very solid digital infrastructure can give access even when you, you are sitting in a rural area and living in a rural area can give access to all of the benefits of today's society, going all the way to how we educate ourselves. With this environment, we can have and we can live a very good life, uh, no matter where we chose to, to, to live it. Um, and I think that is something that for our young generations should be an important motivator uh, to remain also there uh, in the villages where they might happen to be uh, because uh, they can also lead a fulfilling life there. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm wishing you uh, a very um, interesting debate for the rest of the, uh, of the event. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, okay, um, let's say we, uh, we are desperately running out of time, but we have in the Q&A, we have a question, a question by Rob Smurfit. Uh, I assume that it cannot simply be technology for technology's sake. Is there an aspect being targeted which shifts the focus of the technology that is of particular interest to the youth? Has research has been done uh, that identifies which technologies are of particular interest to the, to the youth? I want to, uh, to broaden the question a little bit uh, for uh, Heidi. Uh, is, uh, let's say, generation or age, is that uh, somehow implemented in the uh, DIH uh, program? Are you monitoring? Uh, is there any information that you use for that? Well, I mean, the, the um, EDIH, the European Digital Innovation Hubs Network, um, it doesn't have a specific focus or bias, if you want, um, on any particular age category. It's, it's there as a one-stop shop for all businesses of all sectors. 
um, who need specific help to digitize their businesses. So in that sense, no, but in, in the positive sense, it's, it's, it's open door. So, you know, young people are more than welcome to come, come to the digital innovation hubs and, and get the support they need. And as we've seen, I mean, people of all ages may have questions, but quite likely some of the first people through the door will be younger people because they're realizing that the digitalization of their businesses is crucial. And also it's something very attractive for young people. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, um, I want to, uh, to, to, to close this, uh, this session, um, um, but let's say from a personal point of view, I uh, am very eager to discuss with the Smart Agri Hubs team and with uh, uh, the, the people in the previous session how to involve young farmers better in the digital innovation hubs. And I think that the, the spirit that was shown in the first uh, session uh, could, uh, could help to, to push and to boost the digital innovation hubs uh, community. So uh, I'm, I will be exploring uh, the opportunities for, for doing that. I want to thank uh, the speakers. Uh, for this uh, session. I think we have a nice uh, balance in the policy and the, 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 the operational aspect. And I want to give the floor to, uh, to uh, uh, Edwin. Uh, okay, thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Beers, for this very interesting uh, session. Uh, wait, yeah. Yeah, and I think Mr. Tudorash uh, actually formulated it very well. Uh, with a good digital infrastructure, we can actually do the same in the rural area as in the, in the city. And that, that would be a very nice future. And that's what we all, all experienced in this, uh, in this COVID uh, times. We will move very soon to our final session. Uh, new tools to communicate and disseminate for farmers along uh, with career advice for the agri-tech sector. But before we do so, we will take a short coffee break. And during this break, we will be sharing several videos, uh, testimonials of young farmers around Europe. And I have to say they are really nice. Uh, so, so please have a look. Uh, stay tuned in this channel. The videos will be also shown in this channel. And uh, we will uh, reveal at uh, 11.15. So see you all back in uh, a couple of minutes. The main challenges that we have to face every day are mainly three economic aspects, phytosanitary problems and digital presence. Concerning the economic issues, we have to face day by day with the increasing of the raw material costs and the uneven trends of the markets. We have to give to the consumers a produce that have a competitive price and a higher quality. Concerning with the phytosanitary problems, we have to be ready to act when we discover new problems and issues. The digital presence is nowadays really important. We have to reach the customers also using digital platforms and social networks. In our farm, when we create a new orchard, we start with the design created with CAD softwares on the PCs. After that, we translate what we designed in the fields by using tractors with GPS systems. We can create straight lines in the orchards and a precise design. This means that we can create an orchard considering both natural and anthropogenic aspects. We use management tools and software specifically designed for agriculture orchard. In our farm we use technology also to collect data for every single operation and finally we can collect data to analyze them and predict any single problem in advance. This allows to increase the sustainability and the quality of the products of our farm. I'm Anne Catherine, Vice President of CEJA and Young Farmer of Europe, more precisely in Belgium. Uh, one big challenge as young farmer is to be sustainable environmentally, uh, a good equilibrium at long term with the environment, uh, socially and also economically to get the revenue. And so digitalization tools as 
uh, satellite imagery and GPS to map the need of fertilization and then to adapt this is really great solution uh, to decrease the cost and to have um, good impact with the environment and to have this beautiful concierge. Also, I want to increase my profit to develop a short chain of meat package. And so a uh, smartphone application will be also a great solution. So definitely we need digitalization. So go for the digitalization for a more sustainable agriculture for us. Thank you. Hello, my name is Fabian Putzenlechner and I'm a young dairy farmer from Lower Austria. In my study program at the FH Wiener Neustadt at the Campus Francisco Josefinum Wieselburg, we learn much about precision and smart farming. I think that new techniques can be a chance for the Austrian agriculture due to our topographical location and our little farms. With precision farming, we can run our farms more efficiently and also more environmental friendly. Sensors helps us to use less fertilizer or pesticides and robots save working time in the barn or on the field. But with increasing digitalization, we have to deal more with the basics again, because we need to know why things the way they are. For the future, we should be more interested in new techniques and use it to have more life quality in our farms. Hello, I'm Paul de Villers, a French young farmer from Bourgogne-Franche-Comté. As young farmer, we have many challenges to ahead. The question of environment push our farm in a more sustainable way. We have to adapt our farm to the climate change, but we must consider and increase our incomes in these changes. We have to adapt our work in order to take on these challenges and digital tools are one solution. To access to them, we need financial, financial support. Digital tools help us every day. With them, my farm is more efficient and my actions are more precise and controlled. With them, I have more free time. I can follow my farm from everywhere. Also, due to the pandemic, it has shown us the importance of digital tools to stay in touch by online meeting. As an engaged young farmer, it is very important for us to keep on our work at European level in every condition. Hello, my name is Doris Letina and I'm living and working on our family farm in Slovenia. I am very sure that digitalization its not just part of the agriculture but it becomes necessary in on the farm not just because developing sustainable development of farm but also because of sustainability in all three terms uh, in social economic but also environmental so digitalization and new technology are something we need to be not just aware uh, in agriculture but also try to implement uh, as much as possible in our daily life Hello, my name is Julius. My family runs a pig farm in North Rhine-Westphalia, Germany. On the pig breeding farm, we have to tackle a variety of challenges I would like to mention. The price of piglets is very low and the price of feed and energy is increasing. The so demands on pig farmers to meet legal requirements are increasing. We experience a lack of social acceptance and improving animal welfare is an ongoing challenge. To fulfill these challenges, the digital technology supports me. I get information to make the production more transparent for the consumer and I'm receiving data to optimize management decisions. Using digital equipment, for example, each sow got a barcode, we improve the information on our sows and production process. Based on the data, we are able to make decisions on actual data in the right time. The information increases competitiveness as well as, as improves animal welfare. My name is Paul van Zogel. I work for Jacob van den Borne, van den Borne Potatoes in the Netherlands and Belgium. We do 
precision irrigation. It helps us save water and understand better the process and saves us time in positioning the systems. Charolaise en Pays de Loire, en Gaec, avec mon père sur l'exploitation familiale. D'une part, l'installation des jeunes dans le milieu agricole, de par sa pénibilité et de sa difficulté d'accès, de par la taille des sociétés et les montants d'investissement. Et le deuxième point, c'est pour le bovin laitant. On a de moins en moins d'installations en région Pays de Loire. On est présent enfin, sur les réseaux sociaux, sur Facebook, Instagram. Donc ça nous permet de vendre, de communiquer sur nos caisses de bœuf, de porc. La partie euh, drone, visuelle et tout ça, ça nous sert aussi pour euh, la surveillance des cultures avec les dégâts de gibier, avec l'évolution des parcelles et tout ça. Nos vaches sont équipées de, de colliers à détection de chaleur et détection de vélage qui nous envoient un message au moment opportun pour l'insémination de la vache. Aujourd'hui, il est primordial, si on veut être compétitif, de continuer à suivre l'air du temps et à s'adapter, à travailler avec les nouvelles technologies pour être de plus en plus performant. My name is Ramona and I'm an agriculture student um, and young farmer from Carinthia in the south of Austria. Generally, it is a big challenge for farmers in Austria that the agriculture is very small scaled. That's the reason why we cannot keep up with the produced quantity compared internationally. As a young farmer, I see myself primarily as a food producer and um, yeah, who produces only the best and highest quality food with uh, a big, um, uh, yeah, with a lot of knowledge and expertise. A big challenge is that consumers do not know much about um, agriculture and even the most of them do not know much about the high quality um, of food in Austria. In order to preserve Austrian um, agriculture and to ensure that our products are valued, it is particularly important to educate consumers. Digitalization and digital media are great support for that. Various social media channels, educational videos, podcasts, share pics and so on um, can be used to raise awareness and reach a large number of people. In addition, there are more and more apps that act as a support for the customers and they encourage people to buy locally. If we all stick together, we will continue to create a great agriculture for the future. Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, I do hope you had uh, some time to grab a cup of coffee and to enjoy these very nice uh, videos. I think videos from uh, young farmers with real life experiences out there in many countries in, in, in Europe. After this event, we will display the videos on the Smart Agriups YouTube channel. So please, when you want to look them once more or when you want to look at them, uh, go to the YouTube channel. We will now move over to our next session. And that's a session, new tools to communicate and disseminate for farmers along with career advice for the architect sector. This session will be chaired by Lorena van Kool, president of the Young Professionals Network. And that's a group of uh, supporting young people at the start of their career here in Brussels. Lorena van der Kool, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Edwin, and welcome everyone to this session. So uh, throughout this event, we saw the challenges faced uh, by young people in, in rural areas, especially the young farmers. Uh, through the second session, we looked at the digital solutions and how we can improve the life in rural areas, but also the business of these uh, young people. In the third session, now we are going to look at 
and the communication um, tools and how farmers can make use of the new uh, communication uh, methods to increase their visibility, um, but also uh, their activities on these uh, social media channels. Um, I will start with uh, my head of the Young Professional um, co-founder. Uh, we initiated this uh, platform, interactive platform for people in Brussels right before the COVID hit. And then we opened it to young people in Europe. Um, the idea or the objective behind this platform is to encourage young people uh, to exchange, uh, to use peer reviews, but also to improve the network. Uh, we realized even more in these special times that having a strong network um, could really help to disseminate your ideas, but also to improve your uh, business. Um, just a few more words about the Young Professional Network. We have 85 members and we have more than 420 followers on our LinkedIn group. If you want to see what it's all about, we are uh, currently preparing some webinars and workshops. Please visit our uh, LinkedIn group. My colleague will um, place the, the link in the chat and you are more than welcome to uh, look around and also join this um, really buzzing uh, network. Um, in this session, we have uh, very uh, special speakers, and I say specials because they're all young and they're all active in communication. I will start with Guillaume Joyo. Um, he has an agricultural uh, background. He worked with several agricultural organizations, and he is currently working actually for six years at the National Federation of Agriculture Holders Union in France, where he is focused on the RD and the impact of new technology in, um, in the farming sector. So, um, Guillaume, you have the, the word. Hello, everybody. Thank you for, for your invitation. Um, I, I will walk on, I, I will talk about two points uh, which is important for us and I will make a, a focus on the impact and the, the, the challenge of the formation uh, of the young farmer and farmer in general because uh, it's uh, as in technology it's progressed very fast uh, we will really we really need to improve and to keep the skills of the farmer update so we, we already said before this morning, uh, new technology uh, will help farmer to take different decisions and robots will help farmer in all tasks in daily activities. So it's a way to avoid limit and repetitive regular standby tasks uh, and especially tasks with uh, low added value. So they will help to take better decision and it's definitely a way uh, to save time and use it on better value action. So in the way, um, new technology will help to make farming sector more attractive for young people and it, it could also help to get the better revenue for rural people because uh, we they can use and they can develop activity with a better added value um, in, in other side um, new technology will help farmers to conciliate a better family life and a professional life because uh, we, we also know it's a limit uh, to get farming activity attractive. And it's also a point where uh, it, it could uh, be a problem for young farmer because we, we are changing of structures of uh, family farm, in, in, for example, in France, because uh, now, for example, my parents uh, used to be work both on the farm, but it's not uh, the case for for the, the new people who, who start in farming activities. So uh, the, it's it's more difficult uh, to understand for someone who is not working in farming that you 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 need to work all the day of the year, even uh, on the weekend. So another point which is really important uh, about new technology and with should be help a uh, farmer uh, as decision tools also it's a way to bring more information and objectivities to the farming production process uh, so it's easier to explain their jobs and action to the neighbor and to the consumer uh, we, we also uh, people are waiting also for this consumer 
is no he, he, he won't uh, know how his product is food and the neighbors uh, need to be uh, informed uh, uh, there is no danger or any consequence of the farming activities for his life for example so all the different tools uh, will objective uh, the decision of farmer and it's a way to to, to answer to different kids question or worries uh, worries on the farming activities so that's maybe it's a very technical point uh, on what new technology and especially digital technology will bring to farming activity and we also uh, said um, maybe a lot about this but to use this technology um, we really have a big challenge to renew all different skills uh, for, for example a decade uh, it's only 10 10 crop harvest. But if you focus on the evolution of this digital technology, it's nearly an, et an eternity uh, challenge. So that's why we, we really need to, 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 to bring co uh, continuous formation uh, for farmers and we need to reinforce this activity. If young farmers um, should get all their skills when they start, uh, we know in the next in the next few years and maybe 10 years after they start the farming activities, we need they need to be updated uh, quite fast because the evolution of the technology is very fast. It's also the case for the farmer who are already in place because uh, if we talk about farmer with maybe 40 years old now, uh, there is, uh, you have to work 20 years more uh, and we, we need to, to also update uh, and renew his skills uh, to, to use uh, the better uh, and to use the best of the technology can be bring for the farmer activity. So, um, oh, just this is continuous training and updating of skills. It's probably not in the habit of the farmer in Europe. Uh, most of them are working in organizations where formation is uh, in the program of, the, of our company. And every year uh, you've got a program of formation, but it's not the case in agriculture and especially for farmers. So that's a change of habit we need to initiate. Uh, it's a long work. But it's really important to, to keep uh, all the farming people, all people who are working in farming sectors, um, update and use the best of we could bring with uh, all the technology. They, they already have got some formation, but most of the, in most of the case, uh, they are made by the, if, if for example, you buy new tools, the contractor or the seller will bring you some formation but it's probably not enough because it's a uh, it's a specific and um, a specific formation but and probably not enough uh, open to to the farmer we need to give a large vision of the new technology to the farmer um, all the technology who are available how to use it uh, how to combine it because probably like unique solution for a problem it will be maybe not again possible in the next few years because we have less and less molecule for chemistry for example uh, and in the past year uh, when my father uh, starts to to work um, when they got a problem on a crop he, he have got a molecule for this uh, if I start uh, in farming activities, it would probably not the case because molecules are, there is less and less molecule and I will need to use digital tools and robots and maybe uh, also some uh, biological products, but only solution is not possible. So I, I need to know how I can combine it and which is the limit of the new tools and the solution also. Um, so that's why we continuous formation uh, is very important uh, for every farmer in Europe. At IFNSCA, uh, we, we start to work on a, on a subject with uh, specifically the agricultural data. So 
we observe uh, that farmers are really not enough acculturate uh, to, the, to the data. They don't really know the new risks and the new risk include by this technology, and they don't really know how to manage uh, them with different partners. So we try to build a, a label with name Data Agree. It's inspired by the code of conduct from Copajo Cogeca, and we certify the company who applies the, princi the principle of the code of conduct in the practice uh, about data management uh, with, with the farmer. In this way, we help farmers to take a better choice on their farm and which partner he will use on his farm. And is make with this label, when he use a company with a um, label, we've got a label, he know he has got um, a minimal rules and he can manage the data, he can keep it after because it's not the case with uh, every machinery. Uh, for example, and it's a, it's a minimal uh, right you've got. It, it's just an, an example uh, of the challenge because really farmers don't know anything about data. Uh, there is only a few people who are know how to manage it in farmer. And so that's why uh, we, we, try, we, we try to do this part. Uh, it's just a small example. Uh, there is a really big challenge, but it's, it's showing how it's important for everybody to build uh, trust uh, and improve our skill rural, uh, to improve skill of rural people um, in, uh, in, in every way we could. Thanks, uh, thanks Guillaume, thanks a lot for this uh, fresh perspective. Um, and I uh, agree that uh, highlighting the educational and the training aspect for young farmers and for young people, it is really crucial and uh, we should pay attention to that and include it in uh, our uh, activities and in our projects. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, we will uh, come back at the end with uh, questions for you from the chat, hopefully. Um, we will go now to Alice Hodge, or also known the Cult Girl, and she will uh, be talking about her experience on Instagram, but also social media, and how you can actively promote uh, your activity as a young farmer. So the word is to you, Alice. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks so much. Let me see if I can get this uh, screen share to work. There we go. Okay. Oh gosh. This is peak example of rural internet not being the best. <laughs> we can see it, no problem. Oh, fabulous. Um, so I'll do a brief introduction of myself to begin with. So hi, I'm Alice. I'm 26 year old. I'm originally from Cheshire in the UK, but I now live in Kildare in Ireland. Um, and despite having no family ties to agriculture, I've been farming for about 10 years now. Um, I grew up with a dairy farmer as a next door neighbour and was invited to give a milking a go one Sunday afternoon and just fell in love with it from that point on. Um, I decided to study for a diploma in agriculture and then I went on to the University of Reading and I got a degree in agriculture. Um, and I, During my degree I also spent 12 months working in New Zealand on a dairy farm out there. Um, and when I was in New Zealand, I met my now partner, uh, Sean, who was Irish. And so that's how I ended up living in Ireland. <laughs> and I farmed since I was 16 years old and all throughout my studies. Um, but it was when I moved to Ireland and I got a full-time farming job, I decided to create my Instagram account, The Class Girl. Um, it was born out of two things predominantly, uh, annoyance and love. Annoyance at the level of fake news that I'd seen on social media around farming and especially around dairy farming from animal rights extremists and ill-informed members of the public. And a love because I've always loved taking pictures of my farming life. And so Instagram felt like the perfect place for me to set up camp. 
Um, I first put up a post back in February 2019, and since then I have accumulated over 14,000 followers, over 130,000 likes, I've appeared on national newspapers and TV, and I've even come out with my own line of merchandise, um, but most importantly for me, it's connected me to farmers and consumers all across the world. I've received messages to my page um, saying that my page has given them the push to pursue a career in agriculture and especially from young women this means a lot to me. And I've also received messages saying that since <clears throat> since following my page they now feel comfortable going back to eating meat and to drinking and consuming dairy products because they feel that they are better informed about how they are actually produced. On a personal level, I have gained contacts via Instagram that I would never have had a chance to create the old fashioned way. I've got contacts in Ireland, the UK, mainland Europe, America, the Southern Hemisphere. And I've also picked up tips and tricks almost daily from new ways to improve farm organisation into basic um, animal management tips. Like any aspect of the internet, you can't have the good without the bad, and farming so publicly will always attract attention <coughs> from people who think you're doing it wrong, um, people who will not agree with the concept of farming as a rule, and people who just simply won't like you. Um, however, the good definitely outweighs the bad, and for every one negative message or comment that I receive, there's easily 10 positive ones that outweigh the negative. During lockdown, there has definitely been a boom in Insta farming accounts and an equal boom in the public's interest in farming. Now more than ever, people are genuinely interested in what it takes to provide food, the environmental impacts of it, the welfare of the animals involved, and simply want to know the faces behind the food they see on the supermarket shelves. I would encourage anybody involved in agriculture to enter the digital space of Insta farming or Twitter or Facebook, wherever you feel the most comfortable, whether to actively participate or to simply be an observer. There is a digital space for almost every industry in the world, and I think it would be foolish for farmers to be left behind. It's an amazing tool to be instantly connected to the consumer they can see the real story of what it takes to produce food and feel better connected to what they see when they go shopping or when they go for a walk in the countryside. It's time we updated the, general's public, the general public's view of what a typical farmer is and what they do, while simultaneously updating farming's view on how having an online presence can create business opportunities that can lead to additional sources of income, which is much needed in today's farming world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Alice, for sharing your story and uh, good luck and uh, with everything, your activities. We wish you more followers on Instagram if that's <laughs> possible <laughs> and more uh, retweets and so on. Um, I think it's, it's really impressive and it's also a source of inspiration for young people, uh, young farmers, but also women. And we will tackle a bit this uh, gender aspect towards the end. Thank you so much. And um, I encourage the audience to, to come up with questions for you and for Guillaume at the end. Um, thanks a lot. And we'll move now uh, to Amber. She's a young uh, Dutch farmer and she's also a colleague of mine at Scutalar and Partners. She uh, shares her time between the family dairy farm and consultancy. She works for the sustainable agricultural team. And I will give now the floor to Amber to hear about her experience and how our young farmer combining uh, farming with uh, actually consultancy sentences or work in uh, in communication yes thank you Lorena I will uh, keep it maybe a bit shorter than Guillaume and Ellis but uh, uh, yeah for me I'm a, a dairy farmer I'm 25 years old in the Netherlands in uh, North Holland above Amsterdam and during the weekends from Fridays till Sundays I just milk the cows and do everything on the farm and from Monday till Thursday I'm at the office uh, doing a bit of consultancy for the Dutch Agricultural Ministry, etc. And I think uh, what is most beautiful about this combination is that I can consult with the practical knowledge in the back of my head. <laughs> so I think that a really uh, 
improves each other. And besides this, I am uh, very active as a board member of the Agricultural uh, Youth uh, Association, the NIEK or the HIEK in the Netherlands. So I'm also uh, a bit uh, involved in the, the policy things of uh, how that affects young, uh, young farmers and maybe how uh, we can improve that. So young farmers are still interested in staying or being a farmer. And in contribution to Alice and Guillaume, I think it's very uh, important that young people are uh, staying enthusiastic or motivated to be a farmer or to become a farmer. And I think technology is an important part in this because it makes you more flexible as a young person. For example, I am um, I'm able to work for four days in the consultancy while still being a farmer. And that's due to uh, some technologies that we have on our farm that it's able that I'm able to do this, uh, do this combination. Um, and I also think uh, social media is very important to reach out to our young people instead of the old people that know, uh, know a bit of the conventional part of farming. So Alice, I think you're doing very well. <laughs> I'm still at the level of uh, influencing only my friends to show them a bit of realistic, realistic uh, perspective of dairy farming, but maybe I should uh, broaden my my uh, groups <laughs> and yeah I think it's very important to show um, besides uh, being a farmer that is very nice that it's also um, with, with whatever degree you have or background you can be a farmer as long as you're really motivated and interested in the rural uh, rural life so that's for me a, a motivator to keep my followers updated uh, in this combination of consultancy and farming so that's a bit about me um, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Amber, for, for this uh, interesting vision and how you divide your work and your life. It's uh, really encouraging for many people, I think. Um, thanks a lot. And um, also, let's see if there are questions uh, in the chat. But before uh, doing that, so uh, you have actually one or two minutes to think about your questions to Guillaume, Alice and Amber. Um, I take the opportunity to remind everyone that this week is actually the Gender Week of the European Parliament. And as Guillaume has mentioned in his intervention, we need to find a good uh, balance between our uh, private and uh, uh, work life and I think it's important to, to recognize the role of women in agriculture and of young uh, women um, and uh, how best to do that then uh, a message from uh, the Smart Agri Hub's gender ambassador uh, Antutu Ambiko, she is um, uh, yeah, a farmer, a global agripreneur, and uh, she is actually implementing the farm to fork ideology in uh, in South Africa. So um, let's listen to to her message. Allow me to write on the protocol that has been reserved for all the honourable members of the European Parliament distinguished guests and fellow speakers. It is a huge honor and a great privilege to be part of the speakers during this momentous period. I also want to thank the European states for understanding the need to have a dedicated gender equality week. It is indeed a great step towards our effort, which is to achieve the desired inclusion in the sector. As part of the UN study, women in agriculture account for more than 60% in labor force in Africa. However, in Europe, it's a total different picture. It consists of 30% of women participation and a family partnership arrangement and less visibility on high tech representation. If we could have better access to technology like safety and security for both on farm and off farm activities, the gains are worthy of the investment. We will not only improve production by up to 6%, but will also reduce the number of hungry people by up to 17%. So by working together, we have an opportunity to exchange the knowledge from both worlds by endorsing the local innovations from Africa and also take advantage of the high tech from EU. So I'm appealing to decision makers really to prioritize right at policy level to have a targeted approach in as far as women inclusion 
utilizing the technology is concerned. And my message to young women, particularly those from the rural areas, is that be aggressive in your approach, be ruthless with your time, spend time with people with some vision and be creative and innovative. I'm of the belief that COVID has also bring, uh, granted us an opportunity to utilize our time wisely, think innovatively beyond COVID time, be resilient and keep working hard. Thank you. Thank you everyone and thanks uh, and Tutu for this powerful message. Um, I'll, see, I'll see if we have any questions in the chat, not yet, people are warming up still. But then I have a question to, to you all. Uh, what do you think is different now in, in farming? How is uh, technology or communication and social media influencing the activity and how can young people um, use this to enable uh, a more visibility and uh, more success in their uh, businesses? Alice, you are muted, if I'm not wrong. You can go first. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I think it's, it's definitely been a bonus um, to the agricultural industry because if you are not from a farming background and you don't understand, you know, you look at a farm as you drive past it and you might not necessarily understand what's going on behind it, rather than taking to Google and getting information from you know, possibly unreliable sources. If you can find a farmer on social media, I don't know a single person that wouldn't spend the time to answer any question asked to them by a consumer. Um, so I think it helps to bridge the gap between farmer and consumer better than we've ever been able to do it before. Thanks, um, Guillaume, Amber. Um, you can go. I got nothing really to add. I was also thinking about the connection between food and the consumer and it's a really a very, very easy way to make the gap a bit smaller. You only have to look on your timeline and see something about the food you might be eating a few hours later. And also you don't have to visit an actual farm and go there and meet, talk to people. You can just see it on your screen at home. I think that's a very easy way to show a bit more of the farming life. Indeed, thanks, Amber. Yeah? Uh, yes, um, I, I think there is a big difference uh, about farming activity, but how farmer make the decision, um, the, the ecosystem become more and more complex and new tools will help to take the better decision and in the far, in the far, for example, on the farm, you have more and more data. Uh, it's a link to the, the producing activity and farmer can analyze him by himself now because there are too much data. So uh, you have to know how uh, decision tools is working and you have to, you need to be able to, to understand what is the preconization, preconization of, uh, and which is the limit to make his own decision. Uh, so I think there was before uh, there was it was easier to take a decision uh, when they produce than no, and uh, you need you know more uh, competence to 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 take the best decision than before. Thanks, Kia. Um We have actually a, a question for Alice now. A very a specific one. So, which is the advantage of Instagram to other social apps for farming? Um, I think it's kind of personal preference, um, but I love using Instagram the most because um, I feel like it's the use of both grid posts and story posts allow you to um, gain like a real connection with people and like your um, story posts are quite informal and it's normally me talking to the camera um, and so it feels like it helps to build the connection with the consumer and they feel like they know you um, better than just you know reading words off from a tweet so I think it just adds that extra dimension of connection. 
Thanks, uh, Alice. Um, I see that there are no further questions. Maybe then a last uh, message from all of you. Um, what would be uh, your message towards uh, young people that are considering taking uh, or an advice to young people considering uh, taking up on, on this career, either in agri-food or uh, being a farmer? Very shortly. I will start with Amber. Yes. My last me message would be for everyone who ever considers working in the agri-food sector, that it's not, uh, it is a lifestyle, but it's not that your whole life will be taken over by the farming. It's still possible to do something else that you really like and to combine that, or at least, that, at least that's my experience. And I think as a young farmer, you have a really important role in all the big challenges that our world uh, is, is in the world around us. So take up the challenge, but don't be like, fully uh, overtaken by the uh, the agricultural lifestyle. Thanks, Amber. Very good advice. We go to Guillaume now. Yes, um, maybe the last method which is important is to say there are so many things to do in farming activity, uh, so many beautiful shows, uh, so many beautiful uh, things, and things are changing very fast. So everybody, I think everybody can find a, a way to produce where is in, uh, he can be happy with uh, this way. So it's uh, so many opportunity and you, you, we, just, we just need to try it. Okay, thanks Guillaume. Um, and last but not least, Alice, your take a home message. Yeah, I think that Amber and Gillian have um, summed it up pretty well. There is definitely more to farming than just physical farming. And um, there are so many roles within the agri-food sector. And like Amber said, if you want to be a farmer, it doesn't have to be your whole world. You're still allowed to have hobbies and interests off the farm. And uh, yeah, you should never be made to, made to feel guilty if you're wanting to take time off farming. Thank you all for this uh, really fresh perspective and insight on, on being a young farmer because we have discussed throughout the event, but it's really good to see actually what young uh, farmers think and uh, do. So thank you thanks a lot and I will give now the word to Edwin. Yeah, thank you very much uh, Lorena from the call for sharing this uh, third session and thanks also to the speakers. Uh, well, before we close the, the session, maybe some, some uh, wrap up from my side, some, some conclusions, not really, but more, uh, I think we had a very in inspiring uh, uh, discussion with uh, nice presentations. And actually the challenge for the rural area is to make it uh, more vibrant and economically and culturally uh, uh, livable. And this is a key factor to bring these young people back to the rural areas. And uh, Mr. Ruysen also said, well, we, we have to go from targets to tools. And uh, digitalization is a key factor uh, in that. It will encourage the youth to stay in rural areas and boost their development. But as Mr. Tudor has already mentioned, it also means that there should be uh, a good infrastructure. And there we need the, the, the policy makers. Huh? They have to help to build up a strong infrastructure in the, in the rural areas. Uh, from the commission side, uh, we have seen that there are various, various projects and fundings available for digitalization of agriculture and business. Uh, and the digital innovation hubs can play a very central role uh, in, in specific areas. And they can provide uh, direct support to the farmer and help them to access the state of the art of technology. The second aspect that was discussed in the event was actually the challenge to support young farmers to access the sector uh, based on the accessibility of land and accessibility of, of uh, fun financial support. And I myself was a bit shocked to hear that uh, only 5% of the farmers today is under the 35 years old. Uh, and that is, is, uh, is a big issue. So also uh, Mrs. Lenzi highlighted the issue in renewing the generation uh, because this generation is all, we also need this generation 
to uh, organize the green transition of agriculture. So it's very important to change the narrative around farming and enable young people and young farmers to embrace uh, the technologies. Uh, well, Jeremy the Circle pointed out that it also the cap is already going into the right direction, but it would be important to have a more comprehensive roadmap to support young farmers. Uh, well, Doris Magard from the Commission also showed uh, with the objective seven of the cap uh, how uh, the Commission is supporting the young farmers and why innovation uh, will benefit from young people, but also help young people to take over the farming activities. In this concluding third session, we have uh, heard ourselves how young farmers are in this game. And I think they, uh, they all three showed us that there are still a lot of possibilities in working the, at the farm and combining these activities with also uh, other private preferences, but also we would like to work in a consultancy like, uh, like Amber. So I think this is not the, the, the closing uh, yet of this discussion. I think it's the start and we really have to to do a lot to uh, to increase the 5% uh, of farmers uh, uh, under 35. <coughs> I would like to mention once more that the, this event is recorded and it will very soon be available on Smart Agriups YouTube channel. In this YouTube channel, you will also find the videos we show during the, the break and uh, the links are also shared in the chat. I would like once more to thank all the, the chairs of the three sessions, uh, Mr. Ruizen, uh, Mr. Beers and uh, Mrs. Van der Kolk, and also all the speakers that are uh, uh, live or by video with us. Uh, and last but not least, I would like to thank the whole Smart AgriHubs team uh, for the very well organized uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Have a good day and see you next time. Bye bye.